What is the secret of a skillful drawing? That is one question that most of us ask. What actually is the secret of a skillful drawing? Okay, I want us to just take a good look at the image you're seeing now. Now you see the precession of the artist, the free flow of his strokes, the way he directs his hands and then strokes some of his stroke his pencils. Now I'm going to tell you in the course of the study how he went about making some of those things, both the image, both the, 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 the shading attitude, the shading characters, as in how he how he planned the entire thing. Now, some of the questions we'll be asking, was he really looking at something? How did he come about all this? Why is he not erasing? Why is he drawing without eraser? And how come, how did he position the three? Where did he know where this one would stay and where this other one would stay? And at the end of the day, he came up with this awesome piece of art. Now, these are even more and even more and the things we are going to study in the course of the study. And now in the course of this study, now, you know, because a lot of persons have this intention and this idea, I want to draw, I want to draw, but I don't know how to draw. Now, listen, so far as you can write and you can think, you can see, then you can draw. Now, I want you to follow us as we dive into this class for us to know the secret on how to get or to make a perfect drawing. Okay, now let's, let's continue. All right, now... Our topic for today, we're going to be treating drawing. What exactly is drawing? Drawing shapes and composition. The image, the, 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 the slide video you just watched, just showed you a brief composition of a quick sketch. Now today we're going to look at, in full details, how we can manage or create these drawings. All right, so what is our specific objective? Now the objective for this study is number one, we know the basic ideas about drawing. Now number two, what is drawing? Number three, we're going to talk about the functions of drawing. Then number four, we're going to look at some of the drawing mechanisms. How did he come up with all those things? And then finally, we're going to talk about the steps to consider before and while drawing. All of these are going to build into the drawing, into the subject. Now, if we're ready, now let's go. Now remember, this is a three parts class. So this is the first class or the first part. So I want you to follow me patiently as we progress into the other classes. All right. Now, definition of drawing. What exactly is drawing? Now, drawing is the use of various types of lines to show forms on paper, wall, carpet, rug, on any given surface, including your laptop, your iPad, or even your cell phone. Now, these places are walls where you can what, make your drawings. Now, like I said, the drawing is the use of various types of lines to show forms on paper or any other surface. It is simply the arrangement and joining of lines to express feelings. Now, you see, you have these ideas in your mind. How can you bring it out to life? You can only bring that out to life by drawing. So these are the things we are going to look into in full details on how to bring out those beautiful ideas in your mind and then place them on paper or place them in a physical surface where everyone can actually see your mind and then, you know, interact or associate with it. So, now those are the things we are going to look in today, and then I'm happy you're here. So now if you look at the image right on the screen, now you'll see the face of an old man. You see, now this could be a picture that is recreated or that is drawn, you know, but that's a pure drawing. Now it could be, it could, it, it, it could be somebody's imagination. Now somebody will ask them, why is it not complete? Why is the face half? Why is some place white? Now that is the creative aspect of it. In this course of the study, we are going to de dive in details those things that makes a drawing interesting and unique. And then how you can actually produce even things that are even more interesting than what you're seeing on your screen. Now, let's look at the functions of drawing. Now, the functions of drawing can never be overemphasized. There are so many functions of drawing. Now, we'll start with the first one. Now, it is, the it is an intellectual practice which can be used to develop thinking and observation skills. 
It is an intellectual practice that can be used to develop thinking and observation skills. Now, what do I mean by is an intellectual practice that can be used to develop skills, you know, thinking and observation skills? Now, you see, it is your understanding of drawing that can actually help you interpret somebody else's intention. For example, if you're an architect and then you have a client that asks you, okay, I want to build a house that looks like a football. But, you know, inside the football, you have the parlor. Now, what will come to mind is, okay, what he's trying to say is he wants a dome. Now, you have to design a building that looks like what? A dome. Now, in as much as the person is explaining, it looks like a football. In the real sense, it does not really mean that the house will be round. No. The person is like a sliced football, like a dome or a cone. You understand? So, it is because of your, 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 your idea of drawing that will help you interpret what the person had in mind. I don't know if you understand. And then, however, it is an intellectual practice which can be used to develop thinking and observation skills. Now, the more you draw, now the more you can actually tell the shape of things, you can see shape and then recognize them swiftly. That is the function, one of the functions of drawing. Like I said, the functions of drawing can never be overemphasized. It is something that helps one, you know, understand observation in full you can actually see something and grab it with your mind eyes and then reproduce that and even without the presence of what that thing so that is one of the function of drawing now let's look at something else now if you see the, the you know, if you look at your screen you will see a face now if you watch the first one was just a circle that was then dissected into different parts and then they started adding things and adding things that is what drawing does it is the intellectual practice that what helps to improve one observation's what skill it is with your proper observation that you know okay this eye is bigger than this one this nose is not you know is not is not telling with this nose so what are the adjustments am i supposed to make what are the things am i supposed to add to this to get exactly what i'm looking for the help of drawing will make you understand and observe things properly now remember i told you in the start of this class is the start of this class, I ask a question. Why? Why is drawing? Why? What is what, what is the secret of what? Of a drawing. So that is the secret I'm trying to break down for you now. So the function, knowing some of the functions of drawing will help you know the secret of drawing. All right, now, so now let's proceed to the next slide. All right, now, drawing enables us to have good knowledge about objects around us. It enables you to have good knowledge about objects around you. Now, in your school as a student, you know, sometimes your teacher might just ask you, draw a leaf. And then you say, Mr. Um, like, you say, sir, how do I draw a leaf? How do I? You have been seeing a leaf all through your life, so produce a leaf. Now, the problem now comes, how do I hold my pencil and direct the pencil on how to produce a leaf on a piece of paper is another thing. So, with the help of what drawing, you can actually pick something and then recreate that thing on the surface, on a flat surface. Do you understand? So drawing enables us to have good knowledge about objects around us. Let's look at this image. Now you see, that's a pineapple, that's a banana, that's an apple, you see? And then look at the combination. Now it takes somebody that can actually, you know, represent objects on a flat sheet of paper or any surface that can actually represent or recreate that. Now that is one of, another function of drawing. The more you do this thing, the more it becomes what a part of you. So drawing helps, you know, one's observation skill. All right, now let's continue. So another um, function of drawing is drawing is used to summarize a long story into a simple visual scenario. I will say that again. Drawing is used to summarize a very long story into a very simple visual scenery. Now, I, 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 I was with some of my kids, and then they came to me, and they were like, Sir, there is this little boy I saw. The boy can pray. He can pray. He prays. And then he, I was like, really? So how did the boy pray? You know, they tell me a lot of stories, and then tell me how they, where, where the boy learned, you know, learned how to pray, who taught him to pray, and all that. So then in a very short while, I was able to, you know, to capture something and say, okay, does this exact, okay, is this exactly what the children are trying to say, or... Or are they trying to say something else? Now, you see, now, the long story they just narrated, you can be reading a book or you can be watching a movie. Now, that movie can be summarized in just a scene with the help of what? 
drawing or what or picture. Little wonder we say picture is 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 an image of many stories. You understand? It's an image of what many words. So that is exactly what drawing does. Drawing is used to summarize a long story into a very simple visual scenery. All right. So now let's look at now. This is exactly what I was just trying to explain. Now looking at this boy, you see he's. He's, 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 he has given himself away, you know, he's deep into the prayers. And then maybe the light is coming from the side of his face and then hitting on his face. And then he's focused. He's not opening his eyes. He's just asking for help, you know, from his God or whatsoever he believes in. So that's exactly what drawing can do to us. Now, another function of drawing is it is used to captivate mood. Drawing is used to captivate mood. Somebody would say, how? How can you use drawing to captivate mood? Does drawing shout? Does it speak? Now, let me catch, let me catch your mind. Now, look at this. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, you have seen something. Like that. Eh, really? What? Take it off. Yes, I'm not taking it off. So, just go ahead and look at it. That is exactly what I wanted to see. Now, I just I have succeeded in bringing your attention, as in keeping you on the scene. Now, so that you, you, you join us and see exactly what I'm trying to say. Now, this is exactly what drawing can do. It brings your attention, it captivates your mood, and then make you want to see and then see more. You know, somebody will say, I can you just turn can you turn the man the other way around? <laughs> Come on, use your positive mind and then <laughs> let's concentrate. But now what am I saying in essence is drawing helps us, you know, to captivate mood. Could be used to capture to capture people, to capture people's uh, you know mood and intentions. All right. Uh, attention rather. So now let's go over to the next slide. All right. Another one is another function of drawing. Now drawing is used to confine colors well in any given composition. Drawing is used to confine colors well in any given composition. No artist can paint well without a good knowledge of drawing. Now if your drawing is bad, automatically your painting will be bad. So if your drawing is good, then your painting will be good. What am I actually trying to say? Sorry, let me, um, I guess I skipped something. All right, so now let's, like it helps us to confine color well. So I would want us to take a good look at exactly um, this, this, this drawing that was done by Howard Lee. You know, he's a painter. He tried to explain what it means to draw a bad drawing a simple drawing, a better drawing, and a perfect drawing. So, like I told you, if your drawing is bad, automatically your painting will be bad. Now, the first one is the basic method of drawing. If you saw the basic, if you see the basic method of drawing, it's so basic, anybody can do that, even in nursery school, in as much as some persons cannot even actually create that because they have not actually developed their their their, their mental skill. You know, their mental skill is underdeveloped. Therefore, their drawings will be bad. Now, what I'm saying in essence is if your drawing is bad, automatically your painting will be bad. So that is exactly what Howard Lee is trying to explain here. Now, he has showed us the four basic ways or the four major ways you can actually make a drawing. It is either you make the drawing so basic and cheap, you can make it very simple, you can do something very be that is better than simple, and then you can still do something that is near perfect or perfect. Now, Putting it back to some of the functions of drawing, that if your drawing is bad, your paintings will actually, it will definitely affect your paintings. For example, if you look at the basic, the basic um, drawing, now you can actually just paint with one color and then it is, it is still okay, but it's for the beginner. Now, not to compare with when you, you know, crochet to, to simple drawings, you understand? Now, the simple drawing, now you're not using two colors. You have your highlight and then you have your mid-tone. Now, by, by the time you enter to better, you now introduce the, th the third color, which is your highlight, your mid-tone, and your dark tone. And then by the time you now crescend into the perfect level of drawing, now that is when you are now at the full 3D dimension. It becomes a work of art that is trying to pop out of the background. So that is exactly what Howard Lee is trying to explain in this drawing. So you see, now the final one, you know, took more time, you know, to bring out the highlight, the, 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 the strokes, the branches, and then the stem, and then to throw some, you know, in depth in the work of art. So that is exactly what drawing helps us to do. The basic is just simple. The simple one is just there. The better you have, you know, some branches. It is not full. It is lacking a lot of details. And then you have the perfect, you know, product, which is the very 
or that last one. All right, now let's continue. Now, what are the mechanisms for drawing? Now, having known all the functions or some of the functions, because the functions of drawing cannot be overemphasized. There are millions and billions of functions. But for the course of the study, if I start mentioning them, then we'll go. the video will be too long. So to save us that stress, you know, we try as much as possible to be very brief and then get the full point. Now, drawing mechanism. What exactly is drawing mechanism? Or what are the mechanisms for drawing? It is advisable to always draw from a composition that is already prepared as a model before you even venture your drawing. Now, because if you just draw from the mind, unless you've trained yourself to that extent that you can actually see things from your mind eyes and then represent them on the flat surface. But without training yourself, I really doubt if you can actually make out anything that is, any, that is reasonable, in quotes. That does not mean you cannot make an art. You can make an artwork that only you can actually interpret. Then we we'll call that abstract art. There are rooms for that. But in the course of the study, we are talking about drawing. You understand? So we are talking about things you can relate with. You know, we are talking about proportion, balance, you know, unity, harmony. We're talking about the entire principles and the entire elements of art. So now, some of the mechanisms of drawing is what we are going to look at now. So number one, first, what are the drawing mechanisms? What are drawing mechanisms? Now, before I explain the drawing mechanisms, I want us to see this image, rather. There's an image I want us to see. Um, all right. Now, if you see... You, 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 if you look at the screen, you will see two different images. Now, these are called compositions. Now, for the artist to detail the dripples from the clothes, you need to see the clothes. You need to place it. You need to bring a ball, and then you place the ball, and then recreate what you see. So that is exactly what I'm trying to explain there. You don't really just draw from your mind eyes and then, unless you've trained yourself to that level. I'm not disputing the fact that some of us can actually create things that are very powerful from our mind eyes. Oh, yes, I don't dispute that fact. But however, in your creativity, the first step, you know, you start from what you know before you crescendo to what you don't know. Like for my daughter or, you know, for the ones in primary school, if you want to, you know, if you want to teach kids from one year, two years and above, you teach them with what they can relate with. If you want to tell them to draw a stroke, you show them what a stroke is. A stroke, a curve, and a dash. That is how they start. So then you start showing them one, two. So they are seeing it. So by seeing, they learn. So that's exactly the same principle you apply while drawing. Now, therefore, that now brings us now to the mechanisms of drawing. The number one mechanism of drawing is known as the eye. Now, the eye is the number one mechanism of the drawing. Somebody will say the eye is the window of the mind. So it is your eye that will see things and then send it to the brain, making the brain the second mechanism for drawing. The eye sees the object, send the information to the brain. Now the brain is the one that records the impression and then directs the hand on what to do. That is why if your brain is not working, your hands cannot work. So forgive me if I should say you cannot draw because your brain has not been trained to draw. Did you understand? Yes. It's like somebody that cannot walk, but that has the capacity to walk. But because the brain, you know, is not organized enough to, to carry the body to walk or is not trained to move the body to walk, then automatically the person cannot walk. So you cannot draw because your brain has not been trained to draw. That does not mean you cannot draw. It just means it just means you've not trained yourself to draw. So now, knowing the three mechanisms of drawing, which is the, brain, the eye that serves as the mirror, that capture the image and send it. For those of us that use the camera, you know we have what we call the lens. The lens is the eye of the camera. So if you have a bad lens, you have a bad image, period. So if your eyes are bad, automatically the image you'll be sending to your brain will be bad. So what you produce with your hand will automatically be bad. So the eye serving as the window or as the, as the, as the, as the window of the mind that directs or captures the image and sends it to the brain. Now, it is the brain that now do the recording, and then the hand is the interpreter. The hand will now transfer what the brain told it, and then bring it out on a flat surface, and then a work of art is being created. Now, the hand guided by the brain transfers the impression onto a paper with the aid of what? A pencil. Now, the eyes, the brain, and the hand works together to make a good drawing. If you cannot see, I, I take it to court, take it to the bank, you will cash it. If you cannot 
See, you can't draw. You can't actually identify a drawing, but how can you draw when you cannot see? The three of them goes together. So, but that does not really mean you cannot draw if you don't have a hand. Now, I've seen people that draw with their mouth. I've seen people that draw with their leg. Now, the hand now is serving as a tool. So you can replace your tool. Tools can be improvised. But your eye, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. What can you replace with the eye? The eye is not just a tool. The eye is, is a material that is necessary for the work. So that is exactly what I'm trying to explain. So the eye, the hand, and the brain are the three mechanisms for drawing. So in case you see it in your YEC exams, anywhere they ask you the question, mention the three mechanisms of drawing. Just know at the back of your mind that they are talking about the eye, the hand, and the brain. They serve as the three mechanisms for drawing. Now, this is a beautiful image of a lady. Uh, now, it's an imaginative composition, you know, of drawing. Now, the mind, the eyes, the eyes is absent here. The eyes did not see anything. Now, it is the mind that served as the eye. The, eye, the mind saw the image, interpreted, sent it to the brain. The brain now interpreted it and then gave it to the hand for the hand to represent the drawing on a plain surface. Okay. Now, let's continue. Now, let's look at the word composition. What exactly is composition? Now, this is the arrangement of forms or objects for drawing or painting. It is the arrangement of forms or objects for drawing or painting, ETC. So, whenever you hear the word composition, it's, as, it's like bringing things together, you know, to draw and paint. So, that is the word composition. I know in your English language you have what is English composition. That's a whole lot of different definitions as against the art. The art will have our own definition for composition. All right, so now let's continue. Now let's look at the next thing. Now look at the image in front of you and see how simple but powerful that drawing is. Now this is a drawing. It is not a photograph. It is not a photograph. It is a drawing. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the artist that did that work, but that is not a photograph. That is a drawing. And then it is, it is a hyper-realistic detailing of what? Of drawing. Now, if you watch, my concern is not just the, the hyper-realism. My concern is the, the, is, 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 is the composition. The composition makes you want to keep this and look at it over and over and over and over again. You see, that's the power of drawing. It, is, it takes something that is just ordinary and then transform or transfer it into a beautiful work of art that you want to keep in your house and then appreciate it over and over again. Now, that is with the help of a good composition. The very artist that composed that has understood the concept of composition. Now, imagine if those strawberries, I don't know what they are, if he placed them behind the bottle and the cup, how would this drawing look like? Now, the interesting part of it is, now, you see, the drum and the strawberries, and then, I don't know if that is strawberries or cherries. I don't know what, that exa what exactly that is. Now, they, they, they bring the work together. Now, it is from those things that they get the wine and the cup. It's a whole lot of story. You can look at that, and then you can write a script on it. So that is exactly what composition does to a drawing. All right, let's move further and then see what we have. Now, now let's look at the steps to consider before and while drawing. There are a lot of steps you have to consider before you start drawing and while you're drawing. Now, number one step you must consider. Some of the steps, you don't overlook them. You just have to consider them. Now, some of these steps, if you break them, it is either they fault your drawing or you produce something that will not beat your taste. Now, number one is you sit at a position that is comfortable for you and then avoid sitting too close to the composition. If you're drawing, for example, the very composition you saw now, and then the artist sat too close to it, now you'll find it difficult to make it, unless you're doing a close-up. Now, what do I mean by a close-up? I mean by getting the image in such, in, in, in a close-up, in a close-up shape where you don't get the entire, the, the, the entirety of the, the whole thing, you just get a portion. Or maybe you're looking for a portion. That's exactly what you're looking for. Now, but for you now to get the entire beauty of what you're doing, number one, you look for a better position. You, that's why little wonder you see photographers, they want to snap picture, they stay like this. They're not comfortable with the image. It's what they're seeing from their lens, from their viewfinder, rather. They choose this other place until they are comfortable with what they see, and then they take their shots. You know, angle matters a lot. So that's exactly the same thing that applies to what? To the, to the artist that draws. So you must first look for a sitting position that is comfortable for you first, and then avoid sitting too close to the object. Imagine a photographer that wants to snap you, and then he's bringing the camera straight. I don't know why I'm just using camera to explain this, but that is exactly what nails it. So, you know, 
bringing the camera very close to your face, you'll be like, Uncle, are you, are you okay? So that's exactly the same thing that is applied to the drawing. Now, the next step to consider before and while drawing is to look at the model or object of composition in relation to their surrounding for balance. I feel like going back to that drawing. But let's continue because I just really feel like going back. Let, let me show you something what I mean here. Now, I say look at the model or object of composition in relation to their, side, to their surrounding for balance. Now, imagine if this artist now choose to shift the bottle to the extreme and then cut the bottle in such a way that you know the bottle is half. Now, there is a place for that. Um, I've forgotten the name. We'll call it... Uh, when I, if I remember during the course, if I remember, I will still tell you. But there is a place for that. You understand? But as it stands now, but before you apply those principles, you, 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 you have to understand first, what exactly am I trying to create? Who are my targeted audience? Those are the things you, you put in place before you create some of this image. Remember, our first question is, what exactly makes a drawing you know, magical? Why is this drawing interesting? What is the secret of an amazing drawing? Do you understand? So that all these, by the time you bring them together, you know, you get exactly what you are looking for. Now, however, whenever our major purpose here is that you make a good result while you learn the end thing in the end thing. I hope you understand exactly what that means. Yes, I sure do. Now, what I might say in that sense is now some of the things to consider before and while drawing is that you sit in a position that is very, that is comfortable for you. And then now you look at the model or object of composition in relation to their surrounding for balance. All right, let's continue. So let's look at the next one. You study the relationship in the size and forms of the object and place wider and taller objects behind tiny and shorter words, objects, just like the image we watch. You see, the bottle is tall, so it is behind the glass cup and then behind the sherries, those small, small sherries. I don't know what exactly that is, you know, it's, it's, it's why the sherries, those small, small ones are in front. So you place the taller object behind and then bring those smaller and shorter ones in front of the object. So those are some of the things you consider while drawing. Now, the next thing you consider is you make your impression sketchy now, what do, what do I mean by making your impression sketchy? I mean, when you want to start drawing, first thing first, your drawing must not, the nip of your pencil must not be, you know, must, you don't need to add pressure, you know, on the nip of your pencil. No. You draw faint, you make it sketchy. Then after getting the sketchy whatever, and then you're comfortable with it. Now, don't press the paper with the nip of your pencil and avoid constant erasing. You see? So just make it sketchy. That's the first work. And then it's like somebody is digging a foundation, and then you you just you're expecting the foundation to look beautiful. It's, have you ever seen any beautiful foundation? Like just come, wow, this foundation is so beautiful. What a beautiful foundation! No, so you see, so that is exactly what the, ske the sketching should look like. It should just be the foundation. It should be the basic of your drawing. Then you build on it. Remember, don't press the nib of your pencil too hard on the on the surface, and don't erase too much. The previous video you watched, the artist drew without even cleaning a dime. To me, I told my students, I usually tell them that, that they cannot spoil my work or they cannot spoil our painting or our drawings. It is, not, it, is near, it is near impossible because we are in charge. You understand? So we, we draw and then we convert it into whatsoever we want it to be. All right, now so let's look at another, um, uh, another thing to consider while drawing. Relate the different parts of the composition with the one, with, with the other, and then draw gradually to avoid drawing out of proportion. Now, like I said, you, when, when, whenever you're drawing, you try as much as possible to relate everything together so that you don't draw out of proportion. For example, when God was creating man, he used the same principle, which is known as the formal balance, as well called as um, symmetric balance. Now, in the sense that it explains the fact that if you place an invisible line here in between your face, the exact of what you have here is the impact exact of what you have here. That is, if you mirror your face exactly of what you have here, that's exactly what you have here. Now, that is why if I am editing or correcting a picture that is bad, is so far as if this place is accurate, then I can actually recreate that picture because with this side, I'll just copy what I have here, invert it, and then replace it here, and then 
you 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 good. So whenever you're drawing, so you do the same thing. You look at this place and then relate it. You don't draw this eye to be bigger than this eye or smaller than this eye, or you draw this hand longer than then you're creating something X that is out of what you're supposed to do. Now, having said that, so that is that about that anyway. Now, the next thing is you, you, you have to consider is when you are sure that you are satisfied with the sketch, you bring the shape out well with what thick lines. When you're comfortable with your drawing, then you bring out the shape with thick lines. You understand? You bring it out with thick lines. So now that's, 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 that, that is what we call the contrast. You relate, you bring out the lines, you start shading, start adding fancy, adding highlights, and then for the work to pop out, to pop out very strong. All right, so I haven't explained that. I want us to see this video of how this artist actually recreated, um, recreated uh, some of these things. Now, his name is still Howard Lee. Now, he created this drawing. He, he, he did it with three different um, 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 pencil. You know, to show you how you can actually add light and then bring out the beauty and the fancy of your drawing. Okay, so Howard Lee was trying to show us an impression of love. So he he he, he tried as much as possible, you know, to use you know tree pen and then he created the shades. If you understand, he created the shades and then you know after the first sketch, started applying colors and tones of colors. If you watch, he's using about three different colors here at the middle of the drawing. If you see, you see his highlights. You know, he throws highlights here. As this thing is crescending, you see the highlight is here, you know, to show where, you know, the light hits or the reflection is coming from. And now he's now working on the E. Now that's exactly what it is. He still represents the highlights, he's placing all the details. Now remember, don't forget that you when, 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 when you're working, you observe shadowing. Now that shadow throws more depth, you know, gives it this three-dimensional effect to make the work pull out. So that is exactly what you know, a good drawing should entail. You, as you draw, you put everything at the back of your mind so that you carry everything along. You don't just draw and then you draw some things and then some things are not balanced and some things are balanced. At the end of the day, look at what he came up with. A very beautiful and an outstanding artwork. So exactly whenever you're drawing or creating anything, first you see it with your mind eyes and then with that same pattern, then you can create anything you really truly want to create. All right, so in summary, At the start of this class, we talked about the basic ideas about drawing. We define drawing, and then we define the functions of drawing, and then we define the drawing mechanism. We went about to explain exactly what are the three drawing mechanisms, and I told you it is the eye, the brain, and the hand. We talked about the functions of drawing as an intellectual practice that develops one reasoning skill. It helps to, you know, to bring a long story short, you know, to make it a very short scenario. It's, 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 a lot of things we discuss in the course of the study, and then we went further to talk about the steps to consider before and while drawing. All of this will help you break the yoke of what producing bad sketches and bad drawing. If you follow them in details, one after the other, your drawings will be powerful. All right, so now let's look at the Q and A. The Q and A. Let me just ask you some few questions, and then we'll now go into our exam guide and then answer some strong questions there but first i want you to define drawing if you have your paper write out this question and then give concrete answer to them define drawing then state three functions of drawing now if we went for that i want you to, to answer the three drawing mechanisms what are the three drawing mechanisms and finally you state the three steps to consider while drawing these are the questions i want you to ask okay I haven't said this i guess we'll call it a day and we'll put a stop to it for today and then let's dive into our exam guide. All right. All right. All right. Now we are in our magic world of exam guide where we try our hands on different questions. As you may know, I want to be sure that you're familiar with the exam guide and the screen. So, all right, but if you're not familiar, it's just simple. By the time you log in, you get the code, you log in, and then you click on Creative Arts, depending on the subject you want to try, and then you click on the yay. For now, I want to do a random stuff, and then you can actually click on the subject and topic that you really want to answer. You know, what we treated today is drawing. You pick the drawing, and then you click OK. I would want to, if you can join us, you join us, and then you click on Get Started. We're going to try our hands on different questions, and then let's see which one um, 
you know. All right. So now let's look at question number. Question number three. Okay, let's try question seven. The portrait drawing can be classified as dash dimensional art. The portrait drawing can be classified as dash dimensional art. The portrait is a flat. Meanwhile, drawings are just two dimensional. So anything that falls with drawing, you should know that drawings are two dimensional. So play that at the back of your mind that the answer is what two. So even if they ask you the drawing of an environment, it can be classified. It is two dimensional. So just have that at the back of your mind. Let's see question 11. Let's try that. In perspective, where two parallel lines meet is known as dash. In perspective, where two primary lines or parallel line meet. Now, for those of you that have studied perspective with us now, you know that where two parallel line meet is known as the vanishing point. The vanishing point is the place where two parallel lines meet. You know, you cannot see further. That is the end point of what? Your vision. Now, that's the point of vision. So... That is what we call what the vanishing point. It's like where the earth meets with the cloud, and the the, um, the earth meets with the cloud, and everything just gets into fades into the atmosphere. All right, let's see question thirty one, and then see what we have here. Now, which of the following does not belong to this group of drawing? Which of the following that does not belong to this group of drawing? Number one, imaginative. Number two, landscape, life, perspective, and then seascape. You should know that perspective is not a type of drawing, and then perspective is the answer now the rest of it all they all belong to this group but perspective does not belong to this group because it is it is a it's will i call it a principle in drawing but we have imaginative composition as a type of drawing we had the landscape drawing we have the life drawing and then we have the seascape drawing now finally let's try our last question for this for today okay let's look at question number 28 a set used by an artist for drawing is known as, now this is talking about the tools, the seat used by an artist for drawing is known as, now what is the seat? Remember I told us during the, during the course of the study that um, you sit on a position very, uh, not too close to the upset and sit very, on a very comfortable position. Now the seat that will make you comfortable in your drawing, what is the name of that seat? A, they say bench, number two, B, they say this board, number three, chair, number C. Number D, donkey, and number E, easel. It cannot be bench. You will not be comfortable in sitting on a bench. Neither will you be comfortable in sitting on a board. You can manage a chair depending on what you're drawing, but the best place to sit while drawing or the best tool for drawing is the donkey bench. Now, the donkey bench is the best tool for drawing. The easel is a stand where you hang your canvas. It's another different tool that is used for painting and even drawing, but that's not where you sit. You don't sit on an easel, but you sit on what? On the donkey. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide. Now the app scores and give a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. Now you can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also have other features that make learning fun. Now it is a must have for all serious students. Download the app from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and then share this video to anyone you know that would benefit from it. Thank you and bye-bye.